Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a custom domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Hi there, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'd like to show you how I built this folding leather and wood chair on modern builds. I started this project on my computer, making a really quick model and cutting template which you can get on the written article linked in the description of this video. It'll come with the parts for two chairs, and I did this on purpose. I made two frames, or all the parts for two frames, just in case if along the way I messed up on one of the pieces. That way, I'd have a replacement for it. But it ended up actually going smoothly, and I have an extra frame, so now all I need to do is get some more leather, and I can make a pair for it, which is really cool. Once I had all of my pieces cut out on the bandsaw, I used some double-sided carpet tape to stick my matching pieces together. This way, I could run them through the oscillating sander to send the inside radiuses together, that way they would match. Same thing with the disc sander. I sanded the outside profile with that. And once I drilled the holes that I need to marked by the cutting template, I could separate my pieces and remove the templates. A little bit of goo gone can help get any of the adhesive left over. Next, I got a quarter inch rounding bit just to round over all the hard edges and sanded everything to 220 grit. The frame hinges on a quarter inch bolt that gets epoxied into the horizontal piece of the frame. And then the vertical piece of the frame gets attached using a simple wing nut. And here I'm measuring the angle that I want that inside corner to be. This way the chair stops at the right position. And once I transferred that angle to the table saw, I cut out my horizontal brace and lined up where it would sit. That way, when I clamped everything up, I could drill my holes for my dowels that will attach the brace to the frame. This was my first attempt and I did drill a couple of the holes in the wrong places, so I filled those in with sawdust and epoxy. But don't worry, the cutting templates have been updated. Next, I started working on the front of the seat where I would be drilling out a recess for a dowel to fit into. Then, I could flip it over and make a recess for another one of those quarter inch bolts. Then, I could transfer that hole to the dowel and drill that out for a threaded insert. That's how the front of the seat assembly is going to be held together. It sat a little wobbly here because of the epoxy on top of my stop block, causing it to not sit level. And the final step was to make a 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch rod for the back of the leather seat, which you'll see in a minute. So as you may or may not know, this is my first project incorporating leather. So I'm not going to go too deep into the technicalities of anything, mainly because, well, I don't know them. <laughs> but once I got the piece of leather for my seat cut out, I could start by contact cementing my first pieces together. This is going to hold everything together and keep everything lined up while I do my stitching. It's also going to add quite a bit of strength. And I added this second piece of leather just so that I had some extra material for my stitches to grab onto and hopefully keep them from ever ripping out. As you wrap it, you want to make sure that it's tight, but not too tight to where you're not able to get your piece of walnut out of your wrap. Now unfortunately, for whatever reason, I couldn't punch all the way through my leather without it getting stuck. So I actually just marked my holes lightly and then came back with a really small drill bit to go all the way through the leather. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe I should have punched my leather before I contact cemented my pieces together. This project was also my first time sewing anything. I'm using a single needle saddle stitch and I'll link the video tutorial that I used to learn how to do it in the description as well. Once I could tie it off, I could go ahead and put it in place and mark the location that I needed it to fold over in the front. Then I could contact cement everything together and sew it that side up. With the seat done, I could move on to cutting and fitting my back pieces together. The technique is still really similar to what I did on the seat. I just put everything in place and lined up where I thought it needed to be. Then I could mark my line so that I could keep everything straight. Then I just punched my holes and sewed everything up again. And once I had one side done, I just repeated it for the next. Finally, all I had to do was some final shaping and sanding, and then apply a final coat of boiled linseed oil, which is a really easy finish to apply and really easy to reapply if it ever needs it. 
And I want to stress, if you do plan on building this project, be sure and go to my website and find the written article. It's also linked in the description. It's going to give you cutting templates and a lot of extra information. Overall, I am super proud with how this came out. I've been really enjoying working with curves and more organic shapes lately. It's a lot of fun. If you're planning on building this project and are expecting it to get wet a lot, like maybe you're going to take it to the beach where you're going to be sitting in it with a wet butt all the time, maybe a vinyl leather rather than a true leather may be a better option for you. Basically, just do your research before you build the project is all. So that's really about all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. It was a lot of fun to make, and I'm really excited I took the chance to work with leather. It's a lot of fun. Now, as you can tell, this chair sits really low to the ground because the idea of it is it's like a beach chair or a chair that you would take to the park, and you can really kind of like recline back with it. If you wanted to make this more of a proper reading chair or sitting chair, I would definitely raise the butt up and make the back a little bit more proper. I want to give one more big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using Squarespace personally for about two years now. It's what the Modern Builds website was built with, and it works absolutely great. So if you need any custom domain, website, or online store, be sure and check out Squarespace. The platform is super easy to use and the templates that come with it already look amazing. So you really don't need any experience to be able to build a great website. If you're interested in checking it out, please go to squarespace.com slash modern builds and use the code modern builds for 10% off your first purchase. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up that lets me know what kind of projects you guys are into and what you might wanna see next. And if this is your first time on my channel, first, I'd like to say welcome. I also appreciate it if you considered subscribing. I put out weekly videos and you definitely want to keep updated when I put out new content. I want to say thanks again for watching. If you're interested in checking out another one of my videos, the link will be right over here. We'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Come on, buddy. Let's go.